Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. So it has been a little while since we've talked about these guys here. These are the frag systems. We've been putting our corals through a pretty extensive quarantine process. The frustrating thing about quarantine is that it just takes forever ever to do. But the nice thing is once corals finally do get out of quarantine, they're a lot less maintenance. Because over at the greenhouse, we bring in a lot of corals from either wild-caught sources, importers and the, and the like, or we're getting them from other hobbyists. And there's not a great way to completely eradicate problematic pests or algae or anything like that. So when moving into this building, we kind of wanted to be ultra aggressively proactive about our quarantine. So we're now quarantining here for about like 70-ish days, a little over two months. And we're doing a lot of dipping, a lot of inspection. So if we see anything that's like remotely suspicious, it gets kicked back out to the greenhouse, that sort of thing, right? We've noticed some benefits already. Now we've had corals in this system for a little while now, but we just haven't really shared it so much on camera. Uh, we've kind of decided to stick with corals that can be relatively easily propagated, more towards the high-end stuff because once um, you start to do the math on the square footage of this place, a lot of like the less expensive beginner corals that were pretty much growing just fine out, out of the greenhouse really don't need to be making their way into this building. The focus on what we're gonna be culturing here is going to be more high-end and also stuff that tends to struggle in a greenhouse environment because of all the fluctuations that we get over there with with seasonality like right now we're at the cusp of spring which is pretty insane because it's mid-may and no joke two days ago it was snowing here that's a new one wasn't really expecting for it to be like mid-may and having to think about closing off some of the ventilation in the greenhouse to kind of like winterize it again but that's kind of been a thing but over in this new building it stays a lot more consistent so things like acropora uh, acanthastria and micromusa some of those things like don't really jive so well with the seasonality that we experience out of the greenhouse and we're kind of hoping to like normalize a lot of the conditions here for them so taking a look into these tanks for a little bit we're kind of seeing that new tank startup syndrome. So we're kind of cycling between getting some bacterial blooms to some of the, of the brown algae. Algae, I think it's pretty much bacteria. We're getting some of that and it just comes in like pulses. So it pops in for a couple days, everything looks hairy and gross. Two days after that, completely gone. And then we'll like feed a little bit more, boom, like brown stuff again. And I think a lot of it is just we don't have a whole ton of fish in here. Currently, there's maybe like a couple of damsels. There's a Bangai Cardinal Rescue, and there is a fox face. But this is a 300-gallon tank. It can definitely use a lot more fish. And so I'm thinking about getting maybe like a tang or two. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of tangs just because uh, they tend to be super hostile jerks but i think that having them around just to kind of like nibble on some of the uh, some of like the less problematic algaes that are popping up things like that it's it's not as big of a deal so we're just going to up the bio load just to have like a more consistent baseline because right now uh, every single time that we like feed or change foods or anything like that we we're starting to see these kind of like cyclical um, little bursts of like the the, the brown beginner tank algaes and things like that. So anyway, um, we can just take a look at a, a few of the corals here. For the most part, the corals are doing really well. Some of them are coloring up better than others. And we're, we're definitely seeing a, a lot of growth. So a lot of the, the corals that you see in here were brought in as like single polyps even, like a lot of the, the, the micromusas and things like that. They came in as single polyps, but now they're every bit of like a dozen polyps. So that, that's very encouraging to see. One thing that I love about these new systems compared to the stuff out of the greenhouse is that this is pretty much at, at the optimal height level for me to work in because it's just just at that, that armpit level for me. 
And one of like, the best things that I love is just how easy it is to like turn off all the pumps and start feeding. Uh, we're mixing in uh, a little bit of powdered food as well as some frozen food. And it's pretty, like we don't, so this is mainly for the fish right now, but when it comes time to feed the corals, we get a slightly larger container, mix it all up in there, and then grab the turkey baster and pretty much target feed every single coral. It takes me for, for this tank, maybe a little bit less than a half hour to do that. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of benefits to being able to just like shut everything down, feed everything directly, and turn everything back on in about like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So real quick though, I have to like say, where we've become kind of connoisseurs of turkey pasters, uh, just from having used so many, uh, this is the best one. This is an OXO Good Grips turkey baster. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link for this guy here. It's, we're slowly replacing all of our other turkey basters with these guys, they're awesome. The other thing that we picked up, which is super helpful for uh, dosing amino acids, we go through quite a lot of amino acids and this is an empty container here. It's one of these little uh, dual chambered goose neck things. I forget exactly what these things are called, but uh, they're also on Amazon. We, we started to just get a whole bunch of these, fill them all up for the whole week's supply. So we just have to do it, you know, one time. I'll give you a link to this as well. So for any kind of like liquid foods, they're perfect. You can kind of gauge a quarter ounce, half ounce, pretty much per day. It's a very helpful little tool. I do have to take a moment to kind of show off this new toy. This guy is a 12 inch geocalcium reactor, kind of custom colors and everything. And I've also uh, asked for the upgraded recirculation pump to an Ecotech S2. We can't wait to get this guy up and running because when we tested the water of this system, it was a whole, I don't know, alkalinity of five DKH, something like that, which is pretty crazy considering our relatively low volume of coral so far. There's some coralline growth, but not a ton because most of the lights are usually off, except for the, the one tank that, I, that has the coral. But something is definitely consuming a lot of calcium and alkalinity, kind of unexpectedly. So once we uh, get our next batch of quarantine over into the systems, we plan to have this guy hooked up. Now, what's preventing us from just hooking it up right now? It's very difficult to get peristaltic pumps that I want to feed this guy with. We are trying to get an Ecotech Versa, but if you know anything about trying to get Versas right now, it's a little dicey with supply chains. Anyhow, we are definitely looking forward to getting this guy up and running. I'm certain that whatever dip that we're seeing in calcium or alkalinity, it's gonna be gone once this guy's running. All right, what do we have here? This, is what about a thousand pounds of Marco rocks looks like. We've got all kinds of, what is this, the reef saver. Uh, we've got some, some of the foundation pieces as well as like the premium shelf pieces. Oh no, this is another foundation piece I think. But yeah, I was kind of going back and forth as to what type of uh, material to use for like the show tanks and everything like that for, for Aquascape. And I just happened to create an account with Marco Rock. And Mark was like, hey, I love your YouTube channel. So it turns out that Marco Rock was already a fan of like the Title Gardens channel. So it made uh, like putting together a deal like way smoother because he already understood like what we were trying to do with the different tanks. Uh, he knew that we we're, you know, putting together this big building. We put together like a, basically a, a thousand pound rock package of just various different types of rocks. Now, the only problem is I have to then go about creating the aquascapes. I did, however, come across a video, it was like from Korea or something like that, where this guy was assembling these like smaller pieces of rock using looks like super glue and dust that he made from like grinding these things up. Really, really interesting. I might give that a try. Just get like a big thing of like liquid super glue and give it a go. I'll link that video in the description, but I've never seen anybody else do that before. And then the, the types of like really skeletal looking aquascapes that they're able to come up with was very, very, very interesting. I like the aesthetics of it. I like how airy it was. So that might be something that I'd play around and experiment with. I'll, I'll document that whole thing, good or bad, because like 
I've never uh, really played around that extensively with making custom Aquascape, so this is going to be a learning experience for everybody involved. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for this building update. Taking a look at some of the quarantine stuff here to make sure that everything is not crazy. Pretty soon, this batch of corals is going to make its way into the, the next set of grow-out tanks. We've got a lot of different types of Ganiopora in here, more Micromusa, and we're also getting over some of our premium euphilia because we've got like the you know, dragon souls and new york nicks and some like blue hammers and like a really nice indonesian orange hammer so a lot of like the, the more premium lps stuff is going to be making its way over as well as like some cool chalices we've been like thin on chalices for a good long while i would say there's definitely some fire in here that i'm very excited about so anyways thank you so much for watching if you'd like to follow along with this build, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. We post updates somewhat frequently, but um, there's definitely some, some bigger moves that are coming up. So anyways, I'll see you all next time. Happy reefing.